We do not understand how blessed we are. We can't even begin to comprehend all of the innumerable gifts that our Lord continues to shower upon us. Some of these treasures that we have, we've had for so long that perhaps we've forgotten their great value. One of these great treasures, of course, are the Holy Scriptures. And among the Holy Scriptures, nothing is holier, no words more sacred than the words that our Lord and Savior has given us in the accounts of the Holy Gospel. Yet, we as Orthodox Christians are not only blessed, we find ourselves thrice blessed where we have this gospel, this good news of our Lord's triumph over death and darkness. Not just the words, but also in color, proclaimed by the icon. But even this, even this is not all we have. We also have the gospel, the good news lived in the flesh and blood of the saints, of the prophets, of the patriarchs, of the martyrs, the confessors, the ascetics, the righteous. We can read the words. We can see them on the walls of the churches and in our homes. But we can also see by looking at the lives of the saints the gospel incarnate. Today, we will have as a guide in today's homily, St. Amphilochios Macris of Patmos, a relatively contemporary saint, one who lived and died in the, 20, the past 20th century having fallen asleep in the Lord in 1970. St. Ampilogios is, I won't say it, you're all waiting for me to say it, <laughs> is one of my favorite saints. My closeness to him, though, is not just through his words, but I had the blessing to know one of his spiritual children. And one day I was speaking to this priest who as a child had a saint as his confessor and spiritual father. What was it that struck you most, that left you in awe of St. Amphilochios? I thought perhaps he would say it was his fasting. St. Amphilochios during every fast of the church, not only did he keep with strictness the way that we are to fast, but on fast days he would limit himself each day to seven bites of food. But it wasn't his fasting. I asked him, was it his prayer? I had heard that even in his later years, for as much as seven hours each night, he would do prostrations, full prostrations, saying the Jesus prayer. Yet it wasn't this. He said, the thing that left me in awe was the way that he treated everybody the same. He treated the town drunk with the same love and kindness and dignity as he treated the patriarch himself. The person who hated him, he showed the same gentleness and kindness 
as he did to his most beloved spiritual children. So St. Amphilochius will help us see perhaps in a new light just the opening words of this great epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. St. Paul begins by saying, Brethren, St. Amphilochius truly lived this. He saw each and every person, each and every person as a brother, as a sister. He would say, I cannot hate anyone. For when I look to them, I see looking back at me the face of my Christ. St. Paul goes on to say, be watchful. Grigorite. Where the name Gregory comes from. Be watchful. What does this mean? Perhaps an image from the fathers will help us understand this. It says, we have five senses. And these are like the gates into the kingdom. We're to set a guard over these gates. To be attentive to what our eyes look at. To check each word we say. To listen to that which is holy and to ignore that which is profane. Of course, this is something that requires a great deal of training, to be attentive, to be watchful, not just to that which we experience through our senses, but to every thought. And here again, St. Amphilochios tells us that if each of our breath, if each image that comes into our mind encounters the name of Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, the prayer will act as a filter will strike away that which seeks to lead us astray while purifying and nourishing the good. St. Paul goes on to say, stand firm in your faith. And here, St. Amphilochios reminds us that faith is not merely believing in something or in someone. The demons believe and they tremble. Yet we say we believe, but we do not even tremble. Faith is something that is living. When the Father spoke of faith, they didn't speak of an idea or a thought or a statement. It was something lived by prayer, by fasting, by participation in the life of the church through its sacraments, its mysteries, and the liturgy, through the struggle to be faithful to the commandments that our Lord has given us. Stand firm in your faith. Live your faith. This was the message of St. Amphilochios. St. Paul goes on to say, Be courageous and strong. This takes a little examination because courage and strength is nothing when not joined to humility. We find our strength in weakness, in emptiness, in brokenness, in humiliation, This was lived by St. Amphilochios. This is the example that not only all the saints, but Christ himself has shown us. If you seek to be great, you must become little. If you seek to ascend into the heavens, you must first descend to the depths of humility. And in this, a strength will be found that is superhuman, 
because it's the strength of the living Lord himself. Finally, these first lines of St. Paul's letter, let all that you do be done in love. Let all that you do be done in love. This is perhaps the most important. When you speak to a stranger, know that you are speaking to a child of God. When you judge the sinner, St. Amphilochios tells us where you have judged him to go, you have just made a home for yourself. Let all that you do be done in love. The way we speak to our children, the way we honor our parents, but also, again, St. Paul is saying all that you do. When St. Amphilochios was working in the garden, every seed he would plant, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Every fruit he would pluck, he would say a prayer. If you were to see him working in the garden or walking down the street, They would say it was like he had a propeller on an old plane because everywhere he was going, he was doing the sign of the cross. And having met one of his spiritual grandchildren, I've seen this for myself. But again, if we connect everything we do and we say with love, with the name of Christ, with the power of the cross, We will live in this world, in this life, the kingdom of God. I would like to conclude with a final image, or rather a final teaching of St. Amphilochios. In his final moments, his final days, He gave this instruction to his spiritual children that I give to you today. Cultivate. Cultivate within your heart the love of Christ. Work at it. Read his words all upon his name. Not just in church or in front of your icons, but throughout each and every day. And he says, if we do this, our heart will be warmed. And then even our eyes will overflow with tears each time we mention the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is holy now and forever.